Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple addition calculator using Elementor. Now, the goal with this video is to, you know, give you some exposure to Elementor, especially if you're going to be using forms to collect data, use data, do something with data, and um, just give you some tips and tricks that I think are useful to share with you guys. So, um, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. And yes, this is more than just making a calculator. This is to demonstrate some of the concepts with Elementor. So let's make a calculator. I have this here um, and I do have this open over here, but let's just go ahead and edit with Elementor from this page. And the first thing I wanna do is to design the user interface. Um, it's gonna be very simple. Uh, we're gonna pick a form widget here and drag that into our dashboard and that's pre-populated with some uh, some fields here so we're going to get rid of the message we're going to change name to it's going to keep it keep it as text and we're going to make it a like a plus b equals c kind of thing so a uh, we will get rid of the placeholder and we'll change this id to a okay so the same thing with email we'll change that from email to text give it a label b there won't be a placeholder and we'll change the ID to B. Okay, so we got A, B, um, let's do the button, change that text to uh, add. So add A plus B. And then we need a place for the resulting answer to go. And I'm gonna use a new widget here. I'm gonna pick uh, just an HTML widget so we can type in some CSS, or not some CSS, some JavaScript code in here. Uh, so we can do something very simple like uh, we'll make it like a h3 element with an ID of answer or you know what, what's better than that C <laughs> um, and we'll just you know that could be zero for now okay so let's think about how we're going to make this work. So uh, I did actually did a previous video about sending data to the, the web server, doing the calculation on the web server, and then sending it back to uh, the user here. Uh, but that's, that's excessive for, you know, doing a computation, small computation like addition. So let's do the computation locally. We can use JavaScript to do that. And I do have some code that I already wrote over here that we'll, uh, we'll just copy in to this same HTML block here. So um, it's between these two script tags here. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, we'll just go through this one by one. So this first thing, this first line here on line three is just looking at your URL, okay? And um, it's looking at the URL for some parameters. And this will make sense in a second because we didn't actually do this yet. Um, but it's gonna look for a parameter called A and B and add them two together here on line seven and then put the answer um, in the element with an ID of C, which is up here. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a second, but let's go ahead and make our form actually write the data that the user enters into the calculator um, to the URL. So let's save this right now, okay, and just demonstrate the default functionality. So we can do that. Um, I'll make it up, open up a new tab here, go to site5.xyz slash demo, and we should see our calculator here. So if we do one plus two, add them together, nothing's gonna happen, and if you take notice up here, the URL didn't change. Okay, so that's the default behavior of this form. Now, if we click on the form and go into actions after submit, by default, it's sending an email. We don't want that to happen. We actually want it to redirect okay and the URL that's going to redirect to is going to look something like this and this is where this is kind of like the meat of this tutorial okay this is um, this is going to pass the data that the user entered into field A and B to the next page which is going to be the same page so we're going to redirect to site5.xyz slash demo and then we're going to create a variable called a and we're going to assign whatever the user entered into the a field to that value same thing and ampersand b equals whatever the user entered into the b field okay so that way we have access to a and b on the next page which is technically the same page i think of it as like a refresh of the page 
And then in this HTML element down here, we can get that A. This, this stuff just looks at the URL, picks it apart, gets the A, gets the B, adds them together, and puts it into C. Okay, so let's see if that works. Let's update this. Go over here, refresh the page, and we'll do two plus three, add them together, and we get a five. That looks cool. Uh, some, some weird stuff happened because of the redirect. Um, but I, before we investigate that, let's look at the URL here. We have, you know, our, our, our get parameters, which is a equals two, b equals three. And, and we're reading those in and adding them up and putting the answer into C as five. So what happened? Let's try it again. Let's like pick a, pay a little bit closer attention to what's going on here. So let's do one plus two. So we see something flash, the form was successfully sent, and then the values disappear. So let's do something about that. Let's go back over here to our Elementor form, and let's look at some other options that we have here. Uh, make sure we click on the form. And then uh, under additional options, I wanna get rid of those, the form was successfully submitted or sent successfully. Let's just get rid of them altogether. We don't want any pop-ups to show up. So that'll take care of that issue. But what about the items disappearing, our user input, that disappears. We wanna know, we wanna keep that on the page so the user knows what actually happened. So um, let's edit this script that we wrote, this small script down here, and we can have Basically, um, kind of what we're doing here, document.getElementById, um, and we can assign the value of A and B back to those fields. So uh, I do have another cheat sheet over here. And because, let me show you this, because A has a, uh, do, do, let's show you, the ID of the A field is A. Okay, so we can pretty much do the same thing and go ahead and copy this, get field A equals A, and B equals B, right? Let's see if that works. Update, go back over here. We'll get rid of those query parameters just to start, and then we'll do, let's do two plus five this time. Add, and that did not work, okay? and. The reason is because although we have these IDs of A and B, you actually have to use um, something that I found just by investigating the page here. You have to prefix these with form field, okay, for the input element. So form field for A and B. We'll update that again and come back over here, get rid of the query parameters, and we'll do um, three and six and that is nine, and that still didn't work. So what is going on here? Document.getElementById, right, okay. There's one other thing, it's not inner HTML, it's value, I'm sorry about that, value, value. Okay, so let's update that, try it one more time, hopefully it'll work this time. So let's do a simple one, one plus two, and it's looking like it's gonna work because we saw those already, and we get there. There we go. We got one, two, and three. The user data was preserved in A and B, and we got three down here in C. So um, we can definitely make some improvements here, like as far as these guys showing up as n not a number, N-A-N. So the simple thing would do would be like if, and this is gonna get messy and wordy, if A, no, if this would be if C, then we wanna show the value of C, so it's just saying if C has a value, show C. If A has a value, show A. And if, one more time, if B has a value, show B. So if we go to update this and test it out, let's refresh the page. This NAN should go away. We see the default zero. We'll do one last addition. Let's do something big. Let's do like nine plus 100. 109, just what we expected. So um, very simple 
concepts, very simple tutorial, but I hope it shows you uh, a better way, or not a better way, just, uh, just how to work with Elementor forms locally if you're gonna do some local computation like that. Um, let me know if you found this video valuable. I'm not sure how you guys, or not you guys, but my audience is gonna react to this type of content. Um, and if you have any specific questions about Elementor, Elementor forms or working with Elementor, or just designing WordPress pages in general, let me know in the comments below. Um, I always like to hear from you guys to see what you're thinking about, what problems you're having, so I can craft my future content around that. So um, thank you guys for watching and please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to this channel for more from me and if you do, I'll see you in the next video.